So, good morning. Today is the 19th of Shvat and the 10th of February. And we're learning the Mimer about why was it necessary for Yitro to convert before the Torah could be given. And we're on page 75, Ein <coughs> Hei. And we're almost halfway down. We're here, Vinek Shit Bonen. So it's a very important piece, he says here. Vinek Shit Bonen Bechol Anal. Meaning, the more that the person contemplates that reality is yesh me'ayin, meaning that it's being from nothing, meaning that you can't see, you can't find its source. And that this is different than the way that the animal soul thinks of things. The animal soul's mind is always yesh me'ayesh. It's very hard for it to contemplate. What does it mean that something came out of nothing? What he's saying here is <coughs> the fact that the Torah starts with Bereshit Bara, and like the Ramban writes there, that there's no other root in Hebrew except for Bara, which means Yesh <coughs> the, the fact that the Torah starts with that means it's the first thing you need to contemplate. That reality came out of nothing. And by the Baal Shem Tov, this was the, the second most important principle. The most important principle that he had was Hashgacha Pratit, was divine providence personally on each individual part of reality. The second most important principle that he had was creation at every moment. Now creation at every moment is very hard to feel, but, but another way of saying it is you should contemplate it at every moment. If you don't feel it, then contemplate it. So he says, the more you contemplate this creation of being coming out of nothingness, out of something that you can't recognize, you can't grasp. So he's saying this is like a reset for our animal soul's intellect. And again, the animal soul's intellect is constantly that I can only understand things that are like mechanically descendant one from the other. But I, because of that, I can't imagine God. Because God is what's beyond the mechanical. It's what's beyond making this world work through the powers that God instilled in, the, in, in nature. That was Shem Elohim. Remember, that's what we talked about yesterday. But if you want to, to reset your mind and begin to think in terms of godliness, so he says the contemplation needs to be on this idea of yesh mi'ayin, of something from, of being from nothing. And then, haskalat anefesh be'emit, the way that the animal soul usually thinks, is cancelled. And the way that the divine soul thinks, its intellect, becomes stronger. Le'olid mi binata b'chinat ha'ava v'ira ledovka bo itbarach. So he's saying, Basically, he says this in the Tanya. The Tanya says this many times. That the more you contemplate that Enod Milvado, that there's nothing but Him, and then he writes, Sovev Kolamin, Memele Kolamin, brings those three things. Vekula Kamei Kelo Chashiv, like he does in chapter 33. He does this many times in the Tanya. But here he, he, he takes everything that the Tanya said and he, and he encapsulates it in one thought. And he says that one thought is, that you just have, to me- just have to contemplate that all I see here just came out of nothingness, right? Even if you think that it was 6,000 years ago, it doesn't matter. By the Baal Shem Tov, it's every moment. But even if you just think about it that, because it's hard for you to think that everything, the truth is the moment that you think about it 6,000 years ago, you can think about it right now. There's no difference really. Because it's so different in the way that our, our mind usually thinks that that allows the divine consciousness to permeate, to become stronger, and then the person begins to think according to the divine intellect, and not according to the animal intellect. And this brings about Ahavavira, and this is what gives birth to love of God and fear of God in the heart. To cling to God. And here he says something that is a, a, a very big claim in Hasidus, because we know that it's not so easy, that even the measures, the character traits of the animal soul will be transformed into godliness. So that all they want, all they crave in, their, in, the, in, in life 
is to be connected to godliness. שלא יחפוץ בשום דבר כי אם לדווקא בבחינת אור אינסוף עצמות ומהות להיות בכל לבבך בשני יצריך שגם היצר רע יתהפך ללוקות. And this is how to perform the injunction that it says in the Shema ואהבת את השם אלוקיך בכל לבבך that you should go love with all of your heart and the way that the word heart there is written with a double bet is understood by the sages to mean that it's both with the, with the uh, um, evil inclination and the good inclination. So even the, good inclina- even the evil inclination will transform into something that craves godliness. And now he comes to a very interesting... Remember, he told us before that all of this is, is hinted to at, in the verse, that the candle of God is the soul of man. <coughs> so now he says like this. This is a new understanding of, <coughs> of the candle metaphor. What, is the can- what do the parts of the candle stand for? I, I don't remember ever seeing this. He says like this, Dinei kara ner uaptila. The main thing in, the, in a candle is the wick. Shebo ner chazao. And that is, Vehu anefesh elokit. And that symbolizes the divine soul. Because that's where the light is. The flame will cling to the wick. Shehu bchinat aptila. Shebo ner chazao. Vehu bchinat gilu elokut. So the light represents the revelation of godliness in a person. Sheba chokma sheba nefesh elokit. Where does it come out? In the wisdom of of the divine soul. Vegama avani kreto. And in general, the clinging, the, the fact that the, that the divine soul is clinging to godliness is, is the love that's included in the flame. Ukmoshu katu, vayar elokim ta'or kito, veto vachesed hu inyan echad. Because it says, how do we know this, that light is connected to goodness? Because, it's, because it says that God saw the light and it was good. So the light that the flame is giving out, that's, that's, that's goodness. And goodness and ava, we know the chesed and, and goodness they go together. Goodness and cling and sorry, and loving kindness go together. So that's where the love comes from. As it says there's a verse that says that your 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 goodness, sorry, your loving kindness is better than life. And as we know, love is the inner quality, the inner experience of loving kindness. It's explained elsewhere. And so, the main part of the candle is the wick, that's the divine soul, and the flame and the light that it produces, that is the godliness and the love of God that the person feels. Ah, but there's other parts of the candle. אך כמו שאנו רואים בנר הגשמי, הנה הפתילה, הגם שזה העיקר שבו נאחז זעום, מכל מקום שהפתילה היא בלי שמן, נקלה ונשרף מהר. But just as in a physical candle, if there's only a wick and you light it, then it extinguishes very quickly. It, it chars up, it burns up, and it's finished in a few seconds. So what do you have to have? You have to have some source of fuel. The source of fuel is the oil in the candle. Another thing is, It's not just that it will extinguish quickly, but the light on the wick, the flame on the wick, will not be as luminous, will not be as pure as when there is oil. The oil purifies the light. And the fact that the light is clear and bright comes about from the quality of the oil. Which is drawn up by the wick, right? That's how a candle works. So I, I know that a lot of you know today people almost don't know what what a candle in oil looks like, uh, oil candle. Only Jews do because they some of them light on Hanukkah. They light. There's even some women that light on Shabbos. They light their. But most people don't use this anymore. They haven't. They don't know what wicks look like by themselves. And they don't know what it looks like when you put it into oil. They don't know how it affects it, how it draws up the oil. They've never seen it happen. But that's how it works. You have to, you have to get to know this. This is, a, this is a, a metaphor that is still relevant to us today. Most people today only know about wax candles. And they're not even wax, there's no whatever they're made out of. So there, because the, 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 it's, it's easier to handle, the fuel is, is a solid. And the wick is inside. And Okay, but it's the same principle. In any case, So now we come to what does this parable, what does this metaphor stand for? Now he says, what is this oil? He hasn't told us yet. 
Now he says, in the metaphor, the oil, which is providing the length of the uh, flame, the flame being uh, active, and the quality of the flame, the oil is the wisdom of the animal soul. It's a tremendous statement. <laughs> Meaning, it depends on how good the wisdom of your animal soul is. And it's drawn after the wick. It, it, it searches for the wick. The canal. Take the picture. I, I, I don't remember ever seeing this in him. Even the Rebbe Rashab was very big on, 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 the, on the changing the, the, uh, the, the animal soul. I don't remember ever seeing something like this, but I'm not a very big expert in him. The animal soul? I'm explaining the animal soul this way, that the animal soul is the oil. In the Tanya, what he says is the good deeds are the oil. That's, that's a simple explanation in, in the Tanya, in chapter 35 and on. In any case, says, what's the, p- the purpose of our meditation? The contempla- contemplating that God is creating everything, something from nothing. Being from nothing. He says, it draws... When you say that the that the divine consciousness, the divine intellect gets stronger, so the animal consciousness and intellect is drawn after it. He says that's like the oil being drawn up the wick. But specifically, what part of the, the what part of the animal intellect will be drawn? He says the wisdom of it. But now he says it's more than that. It's not just the wisdom. It's actually the whole animal soul will, will, will be drawn up. At first, it's just the wisdom, but then it draws everything up. Meaning that the first part that will go up is the wisdom. Why? Because in the wisdom there's still a little bit of, of, of let's call it, doubt in what I know. Because wisdom is always nullification. So the, the first thing that's drawn up is, that the, is, is a little bit of skepticism that a person has to have, even in his animal intellect, even in his l- regular logic, that I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't understand everything. We don't understand everything. So he says, if you can hang on, hang on to that, that's the wisdom of the intellect, it's where you nullify yourself, then everything will be drawn up. The entire animal soul will be drawn up. Kid and kambudo, the whole thing. Meaning the intellect and the character traits. And now the amazing thing is, that like in the candle, that the oil causes the flame to be brighter and stronger and clearer. The same thing happens in the intellect of the divine soul. Because when there's an awakening from below, this is a statement in the Zohar, that spirit begets spirit and draws down spirit. When there's an awakening below, it always draws down twice as much from above. And so if the animal soul is now drawn up, just because of this contemplation, again, it's just contemplating that God, that God created everything, something from nothing. He says the animal soul is drawn up towards the divine soul, and the result is that what comes down is an increase in the divine soul's understanding and its clinging to God. This is an incredible thing that you say. And this is what it means, this is what Solomon meant when he said there is benefit for the light from the darkness. Usually we say the light that came out of the darkness. He was saying, no, it's the dar- darkness itself. The darkness itself is the animal soul. And when the animal soul joins the divine soul, so therefore something new comes down twice as big. So now we're beginning to see how Yitro is related to this, right? Because Yitro represents all the animal, all the logical intellect, all the human intellect that was in his time. He was the wisest man of all. And in their time, what was, um, what was considered to be human uh, endeavor and knowledge and expertise was idolatry. It was all collected around that. That was the focal point of all human knowledge at that time. 
he was considered the wisest man in the world. That, that was basically what Yitro was. So the fact that Yitro was now drawn after Moses, that's like the animal soul being drawn. Again, we say animal soul, but we mean mundane human intellect. So the mundane intellect was now being drawn after Moses to, to, to even just because Moses hadn't yet received the Torah. He, he didn't have the twice as much coming down yet. He only had that he wanted to cling to God. That's all he had, like the divine soul in us. The only thing Moses knew was that God created the world. That's it's like saying, that's, that's all I believe in. That everything that you see here, this, God created this something out of nothing. And so he was drawn by that, because he saw that there's something else here. And it's not only that, but like he said, he saw the love that Moses had for God. Like we said before, that this intellect is, is this light that he gives off in the beginning, even though it's very short, he said, what he's saying is that if Yitro would not have come before Matan Torah, first of all, maybe there would be no Matan Torah, like, like we're saying, there wouldn't have been any giving of the Torah. But even if there was some revelation, it wouldn't have stuck. It would have been a flame that quickly <laughs> extinguishes and goes out. So now we've seen the, the major crux of his argument. That this is why Yitro needs to come. He's a Yitron, like Yitro is Yitron. It's the benefit, it's the, the, the addition of light from the darkness. Not the darkness itself turning just into light. But it's the darkness, meaning the animal soul, the human intellect, when it adds itself to the pursuit of godliness, it brings down Torah. So that's one of the reasons that we say that without joining the bringing up, elevating the uh, knowledge of the world into Torah, we can't have Mashiach. Because Mashiach is a, new, is a new understanding in Torah. It's not, God forbid, that we say that there's a new Torah. There's no new Torah. But it's a new understanding in Torah that we haven't had until now. Okay, so we'll end here. And God willing, next week we'll finish the Mimer. There's not very much left. <coughs> and it'll go uh, quite quickly. Because this was the crux of the argument, and the, the crux of the explanation, the core of the explanation. It's a good Shabbos.